This is Reddish Vale Country Park, situated in the People's Republic of Stockport. So without any further indifference, let's sit back, relax, and at the very least, try and make it to the end of this film. When entering the park, one must first endure this dark and lonely path, which always conjures up mental images of being lured to one's own death by the kind of people you only see on CBS reality, and I don't mean Judge Judy. In 1912, Reddish Vale built its own golf club, which to this day boasts an impressive roster of members, including Craig Cash and the man who played Don Brennan in Coronation Street. But in spite of all the refinement the club brings to the area, Reddish still sadly remains the provincial turd that never quite came up to spec, and no amount of golf clubs, pizza oven pubs, or vintage fairs can ever alter that. I always feed the birds when I'm here, and as you can see, they're quite a feisty bunch. So look after your manhood, is my advice. Unless you're a woman, in which case, wear a good quality padded bra, as these buggers will have your nips off. During the 1960 Winter Olympics, Reddish Vale held its own alternative event. A ski jump was erected by local volunteers for the 15,000 people that attended the event, but unfortunately, vandals set fire to the jump, with intent to cause injury. The people of Reddish, eh? Give them something beautiful, and the first thing they'll do is try to destroy it. For centuries, Reddish Vale hosted an annual pagan festival called the Dancing Dragon, in which a large dragon-shaped sculpture was erected and burnt in the park. But no pagan festival would be complete without live sacrifices. Small animals would be placed inside the structure and burnt to death, as it brought good fortune to the following year's harvest. But a human sacrifice could only maximise the chances further. Sadly, the festival was outlawed back in 2000, but surely, even in these more civilised times, a successful harvest is more important than a human life? It was in this visitor's centre many years ago that I fell in love with a young volunteer. She was very pretty and had a nice big arse that was only comparable to that of the Teletubbies. Hiya, I'm Kay. My ball sack tightened. Hello Katie, do you have any walking guides? Yeah, we got loads, follow me. Do -do 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 -do. I was infatuated, so I returned the following day to ask her out, only she wasn't there. A volunteer informed me that Katie had been indecently assaulted the previous day and wouldn't be returning. Poor innocent Katie, I thought, until it suddenly dawned on me. At one point during that afternoon, Katie bent over to rifle through a box on the floor, when suddenly, out of nowhere, her bum crack was staring me in the face. Opportunities like this were as rare as second albums by the Lars. So I moistened my little finger and placed it inside her bum crack and then gave it a wiggle. How I got away with this crime is a mystery. Perhaps Katie secretly enjoyed my little finger. Who knows? But I'm hopeful that the stars will reunite us both someday and with the advent of things like MySpace and the Me Too movement, it's only a matter of time. But until then... I think I might just get off home and climb into bed, as I'm feeling quite depressed all of a sudden. I know what I did that day was wrong, yet I still went ahead and did it anyway, and that's what's really wrong. If I ever do get caught, then I would like this film to be my confession.